In this video, we're going to be doing an introduction to Apple's Music Kit framework. We'll take a look at actually fetching some album artwork, songs, and artists, displaying them, and setting up Music Kit. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below, hit subscribe, let's open up Xcode, create a new project, and talk about some Music Kit. So we're going to stick with the iOS tab up here and the app template. I'm going to call my project Beats. And we're going to stick with Swift and Swift UI. Of course, this works with UI kit as well, but Swift UI for sake of brevity in our view. Now, let me just expand our Xcode window here first and foremost. And before we actually talk about the code, one thing that I want to call out is to enable Music Kit to work in the developer portal, you do need to check the Music Kit service checkbox when you register a related bundle identifier. The reason I used the Beats project name here is because the related bundle ID I have already created and registered Music Kit for. So that all being said and out of the way, let's jump on over to our content view and let's talk about what we will be building. So we're going to basically build a app where when we launch the app, we want to fetch the songs related to a particular search term and we want to show a list in which we have the album artwork as well as the song name and the artist name. The first thing we'll do here is create a struct which is going to represent each of the items we're going to show in the results that we get back. We're going to make the struct both identifiable as well as hashable. There are going to be four properties inside of here, first one being UUID to conform to identifiable, next one being the name of the strong, or of the, uh, of the uh, song I should say, not strong, which is what I meant to type out here, string rather. And the next thing is going to be the artist, let's do string again, and finally we're going to have a image URL, which will be a nullable URL. Now, respectively, we want a state property here, which will be the songs that we fetch, call this item, and by default, it will be empty. We'll also have a navigation view, and inside of this, we are going to loop over our songs in a list and show a related view. Now, whenever this navigation view actually appears, we want to kick off the music fetch so we'll say on appear fetch music and this is where we will be doing the bulk of our music kit work momentarily so we now have that fetch music call we have our uh, loop here for our list and we can finally import music kit so let's go ahead and do a import of music kit and the first thing that we want to do here in Fetch Music is request authorization, otherwise known as permission to leverage uh, the media permission, which Apple confusingly calls the Apple Music permission. Thereafter, we are going to create a request and get the response out of it, which should hold our songs. We'll then assign songs, and that will in turn update our uh, view here since we are in Swift UI and using the state property wrapper for this collection. So let's let's go through all this one by one. The first thing we want to do is actually get music authorization and I believe there is a request function off of here. You'll notice that it is marked async. So we do want to do the bulk of this work inside of a task here. And here we can say await for this requests response. And from this, we will be getting a status back. Now, once we have a status, we want to switch on it. And if the user has authorized, we want to basically continue inside of here. And for all the other cases in today's video, we're just gonna ignore them basically since we intend to grant permission. The next thing we wanna do is actually create a request and send it off to get some data. So the way we can create a request is up here in a uh, private anonymous closure, so I'm going to call this a request. And if we type out music requests, you'll see that there are a couple to choose from. Now, new from WWDC 2022, there are a variety of new requests, but because we have to test this on device and I don't have iOS 16 beta yet, we are going to stick with one of these. Specifically, we want a search request, which is a catalog search request. Now in the block here, we can create this request by doing var request and we'll create this. And you can see we can actually pass in a term as well as the type of objects we wanna get back. 
the term we're going to be looking for is happy. And the thing that we want to get back is a model of a song. Other supported models include albums, artists, playlists, music videos, etc, etc. So cool, so now that we've got this request, I'm also going to update the limits to return 25 items. I believe the default is 5 and the limit is 25. I initially tried to do 100, it didn't work, so definitely do 25. So now that we've got this request here, here we can actually use this. So what we want to do in a do catch block, no pun intended, we want to actually kick this off and get a result from it. So we're going to say try await request and we want to get the response. Now once we have this result, we are going to say self.songs is going to be results.songs and we essentially want to compact map this into the above declared item struct that we have. So inside of here we can say return init and then we want to specify a title for our song aka name, the artist, and a image URL. So here we can grab the title, here we can grab the artist name, and here off of the artwork we can call a function to grab a URL and we can specify the width and height that we so desire. In our case we'll do 75 by 75. Now once we've got our songs here updated, essentially our view should just update automatically now since it is a stateful property and we are observing it here in our list iteration. Now, a couple few things to call out before we actually finish up here. Let me move this comment first and foremost. We definitely want to print out a error if it does exist. Now, of course, in your actual application, please don't print out an error. You should proper, probably handle it appropriately. Now, because this has to be tested on device and doesn't work in the simulator, God only knows why, uh, what I'll do for the sake of this video, in addition to throwing up a screenshot of what this looks like on device, I'll print out the first element in our songs collection, like so. And let's see what else we need to do. We never really built out this view, now did we? So let's actually create this. We have a H stack. We're gonna toss in a async image, and we're gonna supply the image URL, like so. Now we already know the width and height, so I will specify it here as a frame. The next thing we want right next to this is a V stack with an alignment of leading. And let's get rid of the spacing since we'll take the defaults. Now inside of here, we want two text labels. The first one being the uh, song name and I'll give it a font of perhaps title three. And then we also want another text and here we are going to use the artist name and give this a font of perhaps footnotes. Let's also give this guy a little bit of padding. We can stick with the default and we should be in pretty good shape. Now the one thing which I always forget to do and I'm not gonna forget it today is here we have actually requested for authorization. Let's make sure to not forget and add this to our info P list. For some reason, when I add it to my info P list here in the project navigator, Xcode likes to not pick it up. So if that happens for you, I'll show you a quick little trick to make sure it does get added. So we want the media library usage description and we are going to uh, put a string here. Let's try that one more time. We're gonna do privacy media usage description and we'll say please allow access to continue. And let's see, let's click out of this, hit command S to save. And if you right click your project on the left, hit show in finder Inside of here, you should actually see the uh, info P list. Now, if you don't, uh, it could be the case that you don't, like I just did right there. But if you don't and give it a run, like I am about to do in our simulator, you should see your application crash if you don't have the proper authorization set. So let's see what actually ends up happening here. And if we do crash, we'll have to take care of this in addition to uh, actually figuring out why it's not uh, working. So it looks like we have not actually crashed here, but the good news is that we are making the request here. We can see API music.apple.com. But again, this is not supported in a simulator. I'll run it on my device and toss it up on the screen any moment now. And this is basically how you would integrate music kits into your application. 
Now, with WW 2022, there are many more requests that are available to you. Particularly, now you can really easily get top charts. You know, a lot of the functionality that the Spotify API exposes, frankly, it's not really, you know, a surprise that Apple is going after that market. Pretty cool to see. There are also functionalities available to allow users to log in for Apple Music subscribers, to play audio, as well as Apple allowing you to kick off a Apple Music trial within your app, a pretty clever way for them to generate more revenue. So once again, Music Kids, basic introduction. Let me know in the comments down below if you've used it before. Drop a like if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned for more Dub 2022 video updates. Share the video, connect on all the socials. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.